I have found that a lot of birding involves luck, patience, and determination. Put yourself in the bird's preferred habitat, set up your optics, and wait. Then wait some more. If nothing happens, maybe try again on another day with a slight change of location or time of day. That was certainly the case for me this time around. It took some effort, but eventually, my persistence paid off in finding the American Dipper. On multiple days, I found it in the same location, but only when the sun was setting and there was very little light left in the sky. It would launch its body into the inky black water over and over again. After doing that for some time, it would rest, standing stoically on the ice and preen for a bit. Then it would resume diving. I was quite impressed with the toughness of this little songbird. It seemed indifferent to the ice and cold water. There are five species of dipper in the world. Aside from the American dipper in North America, there is the white-throated dipper, located in Europe and Asia. Then there's the brown dipper, also in Asia. The last two are in South America, the white-capped dipper in the western part and the rufous-throated dipper in a small area in Bolivia and Argentina. Their scientific name is Cinclus mexicanus. They are known as the water oozel, or water thrush. These names can be misleading, however. Oozel refers to the common blackbird, a type of thrush found in Europe. It has nothing to do with New World blackbirds, which are icterids. That being said, their plump body shape and upturned tails make them look like a cross between a thrush and a wren. But dippers aren't part of the thrush family. They are in a class of their own, an aquatic songbird with brownish-gray feathers. And though they may appear drab, their coloring provides fantastic camouflage, allowing them to blend in seamlessly with the color of wet rocks and logs. If you look closely, you may notice a small strip of white above the eye. They have white feathers on their eyelids, revealing a surprising flash of white when they blink. While most of us would think twice before jumping into the nearest rapids, the dipper is fearless. They are found near fast-moving mountain and coastal streams and rivers in the North American West, ranging from Alaska to Panama. While often associated with mountain habitats, they can also be found in low elevation and even deserts. As long as there is clean, rushing water and sufficient prey, the dipper can thrive. You will rarely find this bird venturing away from the water. Naturalist John Muir declared of the dipper, quote, Bird and stream are inseparable, songful and wild, gentle and strong, end quote. The presence of dippers is an indicator of stream health and good water quality, since they only forage in clear water. Pollution, acidification, and increased silt load are threats to dipper populations. Their songs are loud, very loud, which is needed to carry over the roar of the water. If you have ever camped or hiked near a fast-moving stream, you know just how much communication can be impaired. The majority of their diet consists of aquatic insects and insect larvae. Some of their favorites are the larvae of mayflies, caddisflies, stoneflies, midges, and mosquitoes. They will also eat flying insects, worms, crayfish, tadpoles, fish eggs, and very small fish. They need large rocks or fallen logs along the stream side for perching, and a stream bed with coarse gravel or cobblestones is perfect, as prey can often be found hiding underneath. To obtain this prey, they dive, snorkel, and wade. Here's how it works. Their bones are solid instead of hollow, reducing buoyancy. They can dive for up to 15 seconds at a time. A flap in their nostrils closes to prevent water inhalation when they submerge. Their wings are short and muscular and act like flippers. It's as if they fly underwater, their wing beats propelling them to the bottom. They turn over stones with their beaks to harvest the prey, hiding underneath. Their strong legs, long toes, and powerful claws grip rocks like a set of crampons. This allows them to withstand fast-moving currents that would be too fast for a human to stand in. If they are foraging in shallow water, they do a sort of snorkeling, 
paddling their wings and unwebbed feet while their heads are underwater. Or they wade, plunging their head or most of their body into the water. These birds are exquisitely adapted for withstanding cold temperatures. They have an unusually high amount of hemoglobin in their blood, allowing them to store large amounts of oxygen during underwater dives. To complement that, their metabolism is about one-third slower than songbirds of similar size. Their feathers are densely packed, with a thick undercoat of down to help them withstand cold air and water temperatures. Also, they are oilier than other birds. The preen gland of most birds looks like a candle wick, but in the dipper, it is ten times larger, looking more like a stubby, bulbous appendage. When underwater, the well-oiled feathers trap thousands of tiny air bubbles, giving them a silvery appearance and making them less visible to prey. They have a nictitating membrane, or third eyelid, that allows them to see underwater. This membrane also provides protection and keeps the eye moist. Additionally, the muscles that connect to the lens in their eyes are finely tuned to overcome the challenge of refraction while underwater. In the spring, melting ice and flowing streams herald the beginning of nesting season. The ideal location is a vertical structure that is inaccessible and over rushing water. This could be among large boulders, a cliffside, underneath a bridge, and occasionally behind a waterfall. In this latter option, flight through falling water is required each time the bird is to enter or exit the nest. The female chooses the nest site and does most, if not all, of the nest construction. The nest has two components. The domed outer layer is made up of moss, leaves, and grasses. First, coarse grasses and leaves are woven to make up the dome. Then, moss is worked into the structure as much as possible. Its water-retentive properties can absorb streamside spray and help keep the deeper layers of the nest dry. The inner part is a woven cup or pad of grasses and leaves that stays cozy and dry. This is where the eggs will be laid. Their nests are large, about the size of a basketball, and have an entrance hole that faces the water. The typical clutch size is four to five eggs. The female incubates the eggs for 14 to 17 days during which time the male will feed her. Once the young hatch, she will brood them for about a week and then join the male in feeding the chicks. 24 to 26 days later, they are ready to fledge from the nest. The parents will continue to feed the young birds for another few weeks after that. After nesting season is over, dippers undergo a molt that is more akin to that of waterfowl than their songbird relatives. Instead of losing their wing and tail feathers a couple at a time, they shed these feathers all at once, rendering the bird flightless for a period of time. There's a good reason for having an accelerated molt. Gradual loss of these feathers would make underwater foraging difficult and prolonged, so they get it all done in one shot. And then remarkably, four to 14 days later, they have a new coat of feathers and can resume diving. You can't miss the dipper's distinctive bounce as they perch and forage. The whole body moves up and down, and the legs bend and straighten as if they're doing squats. They dip when agitated, when feeding, and during courtship. They dip whether solitary or when other dippers, birds, or predators are nearby. Even fledglings dip. They dip at a rate of 40 to 60 times per minute. So, why do dippers dip? It isn't known for sure, but ornithologists have several theories. One, it may help them better locate prey underwater as their eyes move up and down with each dip. This may allow them to measure depth and location in a rapidly moving environment. Two, it may help conceal them from predators against the backdrop of moving water. Three, Due to the roar of rushing water, it serves as nonverbal communication with other dippers. The dipping may be used to say, This is my territory, go away, or Hello, I'd like to mate with you, we'd make great parents. And four, 
It may serve as a signal of fitness. As I studied this bird in and out of the field, I was continually amazed. Their habitat of choice, their fearless dives, their nests, they are just a marvel. Do you have a dipper in your area? Let me know in the comments section down below. Thank you for watching. That's all for this time. I'll see you again soon.